Hello, I want to show you a hooded towel today. Um, I haven't found many places that tell me what size towels to use, so it's been trial and error. My first ever hooded towel I made so huge, the hood would have fitted a baby elephant. Um, quite frustrating at the time, but quite comical now I look back on it. But I want to avoid you having that issue. So, um, through trial and error, and asking questions and so on, I'm, I'd like to tell you the size that I like to use and have found to be quite good. Um, I start with a, a bath towel, just a normal bath towel, not a bath sheet. A towel that's about 50 inches um, by about 28 inches or so, um, just, just your, your normal bath towel size. And then I do buy a, a large towel it, or you could even just buy a hand towel and cut it into two but I like to buy a, a big towel that I can actually cut down and get various amounts of hoods out of um, but basically what you want is uh, a towel uh, for the hooded part you want a towel that's going to be 26 inches across now this is a little bit more than that and that's because at the moment I've got the bound edges which I just want to keep for now just so that it's less to, to fray and getting a mess with but I will end up cutting the edges before I sew them together to measure 26 inches across. And you want 8 inches deep. This is slightly more, but it, it really doesn't matter. Just, you know, literally just a quarter of an inch. Um, that's fine. And I always make sure that the design is going to be stitched on the bound edge, not the cut edge. Uh, because that will be the part that's showing uh, around the rim of the hood. So that's the size of the towels that we need to start with. So I can put that aside for now. And we come to the, the design itself. And I've done this in various stages to show you. But what I do is I print the design off on my printer. Make sure the settings are actual size, not 100% or to fit. But to make sure the printer is set at actual size. So I print the design off and then what I did was... I cut out the design. Before I did, however, cut out the design, I marked arrows to show north on the circles that I've cut out and then inward lines for the right and left going inwards. Just to remind me of what pieces were and it will come relevant in a moment. So I just wanted to show you what it looked like when it was printed off and then cut out. Now, obviously, that's the outer circle, which will be the goggles of the one-eyed monster. This will be the pupil of the one-eyed monster. Sorry, not the pupil, the actual whole eye. That's the pupil there. Um, so I've cut out going around the outside of the stitching. And again, I then cut the circle for the... the eyeball itself and then what I've done is I find it very handy to draw around onto freezer paper good old Reynolds freezer paper which you can get from all places this is absolutely fantastic I live and die by this for applique it's so handy to have you iron it on the fabric which allows you to then cut the shape out uh, for the exact size you need you can actually even print onto it if you cut it into an A4 size or you can buy it ready cut into A4 sheets. You can print onto it directly. But I find it more economical to use it this way by printing onto A4 paper and cutting the shapes out so I'm not using whole sheets of the um, freezer paper. So I've drawn around the design and as I did so I also marked an arrow on the freezer paper because I'm going to need that to, to let me know when I'm stitching the design. So I've cut all the relevant shapes out roughly. I haven't done it perfectly because I'm going to iron it onto the fabric that I'm using for the applique and then I will cut round it. it. Again, that will become relevant as to why I haven't done it at this stage. Now also for applique, I like to use uh, heat and bond um, yeah, heat and bond iron on adhesive, sorry. Um, it's the sewable one, not the non-sewable one, because you are going to be sewing with it. 
it's absolutely fantastic it stops your fabric puckering later on when you wash the the say you do a top um the the they might get shrinkage well this stops it puckering keeps it nice and flat and even and i absolutely love it and you get a lot in the roll so i use that so what i've done is cut out some pieces which i will then first iron onto the fabric um so take the gray fabric for example for the goggles i'll i'll put the heat and bond on one side then the fabric so that the sticking side is going to be up so that when i iron this will stick to the fabric and then i also will be ironing the circle the shape that i need the freezer paper onto it so it will all become sandwiched and i'll show you that now um, and what you want to do is make sure really that the that you've cut enough of a shape out to cover the whole area of the uh, cup sorry cut enough of the heat and bond out to cover the whole area that that you're going to be using for the fabric so you can iron them separately on but i just find it quicker and easier to to do it this way so they're stuck there like that for now um, I'll do it with all the pieces um, and I shall uh, sort that out and come back in a second to show you what we do next so here we have them stuck together I've already cut out the circle of the eye and the two black side pieces for the goggles and I'll just show you, it's lovely and easy to cut out because once it's all gone cold, all pieces of the paper, both back and front, are all firmed up. Um, so it makes for a nice, easy cut. So I go around the circle. And then these pieces of fabric will be ready to use on the towel in the hoop. Um, so there we have those pieces. Now we come to setting them aside. Now we come to the actual hooping of the towel. I put a piece of one sheet of tear away stabiliser. Uh, I found that I didn't need two and two can be a bit difficult to tear away and also um, leads for a stiffer feel on the design. So I just find one sheet of tear away is enough because very often you find that these um, hooded towels, they're not dense designs. So you don't have to worry about having lots of layers of stabiliser to, to keep the design, um, s keep the stabiliser still and so on, stop the fabric moving. Uh, a lot of in the hoop designs go across the hoop because they have a wide picture rather than a tall one. However, um, the design I'm doing today is a taller one rather than a, a wider one. So I will be going down in the hoop. Um, I want to make sure that I'm going to stitch onto the good side of the towel. So on this one, I've got the underside hem that shows and the nice side. So I fold the right sides together and I want to find the center of the towel which will be obviously for the center of the design. Um, now I use a temporary spray adhesive on, on the backs of the towels to just temporarily stick the towel to the stabilizer. I don't use too much. You don't need to use too much because once the design's stitching, it stays put anyway. So just the light spraying and you have points on your hoops for the center of the design and also the little points at the bottom that show you where the bottom of the stitch line will be so i just want to make sure that i'm lining that up because i want the design to come to the bottom of the towel And I also want the towel to be exactly straight on. And that looks fairly straight to me. 
Um, the good thing is about the temporary spray adhesive is that you can shift things about if you need to. It's quite forgiving and you can always spray a bit more on if you need to. So I'm happy with the, the layout of where my towel is. Um, so I need to put this into the hoop to start the stitching off um, and get ready to show you that. So again, I shall be back shortly. So we're now at the stage of stitching the design. Uh, normally when you use towels or other fabrics such as um, jersey, knits and so on, you would normally use a layer of water soluble solvy on the top to keep the stitches above the fabric pile rather than if you don't use it they can sink in however because I'm doing applique and I'm using heat and bond adhesive if I use the water soluble stabiliser it will stick to that and not the actual towel so just for the applique part I won't be using it when I come to stitch the mouth and the tuft of hair at the top I will use it so the first thing as usual what I always do is bring the hand wheel towards me to pick up the bobbin thread. This is especially important in um, things like the hooded towels because you want the design to look nice on the back as well by having neat stitch work. So I've brought that up and through, it took two turns. So we have both threads now and I start by stitching the first placement line for the the stitching just to snip the threads and we have the first place of the line for the goggles of the one-eyed monster so carry on stitching that round And now what I will do is take it over to my ironing board to iron, you peel off the, the back of the heat and bond um, adhesive and you see a shiny side and I will iron that on, I can also take the freezer paper off at this stage uh, because I know which way it's going now, I'll iron that on as it is and then come back to show you the next stage from there. Okay, because I actually took the item out of the hoop, um, I, then, I will then do the bobbin thread again so that to make sure um, that I have it in the, on the top of the design rather than underneath. Oh, I'm sorry about the and not the camera. Um, yeah, so here we have the bobbin thread again. You only need to do this if you take the design out of the hoop. I'm just going to move the camera because I keep knocking it. So I'm now going to stitch, although I've ironed this on, it's now just going to stitch on just going to stop it there just to cut the threads again to keep it all neat as we're going along so it's just going to stitch around the edges of the fabric it may not catch it all in um, I'm not sure uh, but it, it will be more or less how it should be Okay, now the next step will be to st stitch the inner circle um, and I've got something out to show you, um, I thought I'd take this opportune moment to show you something that I bought. So there we have the placement line for the inner circle which will be stitched in grey also. Um, now, I once bought um, a little tiny hand iron. It was like a, a curling tong type iron. The one I bought was actually made by Clover. 
I didn't find that it got hot enough for what I wanted and I found it a bit of a faff one to be honest with you but I'm not saying it was that particular iron um, I'm just saying that I don't get on with them uh, plenty of people I know do but I preferred the heat of a, a normal iron but I bought a handy little travel iron which is just lovely to use in the hoop as such so I'm just going to turn the move that back a little bit now I have the circle disc of the middle and if I just peel off the back of the heat and bond paper so that I'm left if it will come away ah, that's got it so that I'm left again with the shiny side and the arrow showing me upwards so I roughly know where I am now with that and I can also see with the placement stitches so I'm covering all the placement stitches and I use my handy little travel iron. I haven't had to bring the whole design off the, out of the machine. So that's got it. That's all bonded nicely. So I can just slide it back into the machine, pull the thread tighter again, and then carry on stitching. So I'm now going to put that line down to stitch the fabric on nice and easy haven't had to take it out of the hoop or mess about like that it's a very handy little thing it's just a simple travel iron that i bought from uh, a good shop uh, for five pounds so it's it's really good price so now i've got to change the thread to black to stitch the square placement lines for the side parts of the goggles so I'm going to change threads and be back shortly I have just placed the first uh, placement line for the black strap for the goggles um, so I've now got the piece of fabric that I want for that side which I should just show you again Taking the heat and bond back off. Placing it just where I want it. If I move the black thread out of the way. I can then take the top paper off for the freezer paper and just iron Iron the piece of fabric on. That's done that. Put it back to the hoop and then it's just going to stitch it in place. That's that. And then Stitch the placement line for the other side of the bubbles. And now we're going to stitch the satin stitch around the black. Um, I'm sure you don't want to watch that and be bored rotten. So what I'm going to do is sew the satin stitch change back to the grey thread to sew the satin stitch around each of the circles and I'll come back to show you what's what after we've done that. So we've now stitched the um, satin stitch around all the pieces of applique fabric. I'm now going to do a fill stitch which is going to be the iris of the uh, eye. Stop the machine there just to snip the thread. And I'll continue stitching that. And so we've got to the final part of the design, the last block, and this is where we're going to do a small amount of stitching. Um, so I mentioned earlier about using the water soluble stabilizer. Um, so I'm just using a bit of that. I'm going to guess roughly where the design will go 
have a, a rough idea and then just use a bit of masking tape to stick it down just to keep hold of it for a short while whilst it stitches and then do the same again at the top for where the hair will go and then start stitching and it will stitch the pupil first and then again I'll come back afterwards and show you the finished stitch out and that's it it's all finished stitching um, all I do uh, before I wash it just to I'm, I'm never sure if this water soluble solvy uh, causes any problems further down the line in the washing machine so I, I always like to remove as much as I possibly can um, just to avoid any possible potential trouble um, like I say I don't know if it does cause it I just like to err on the side of caution uh, so I cut as much as I can of, of that off do the same again for the tufts of hair and um, then we're ready to compile it and put it together with the bottom half of the towel to then uh, have the finished article okay so I've finished my design it's all ready to go uh, to be stitched to the other part of the towel um, but at the beginning you may remember I did say that it was slightly longer than 26 inches so now that I've I'm ready to sew I'm going to trim the two ends so I meet them together to make sure that I have got an equal amount off each end and because it's meant to be 26 inches I've got my trusty big quilting ruler and I'll measure 13 inches go to the 13 inches so that I've got that left hanging and just use my trusty uh, rotary cutter I don't know how anyone coped without these I absolutely love mine and if you haven't got one I highly recommend you do go and get one so that's the towel trimmed off and fingers crossed it will now measure 26 inches across a bit late if it doesn't yeah that's lovely so now it comes to sewing as I said before this will be the rim of the hood and this is the back of the hood so I put this together and I'm going to sew sorry I should put it inside out so the right sides together because we're going to sew the back of the hood together so that you'll end up forming the hood shape so I'm just going to clip them and then come back and show you a bit more detailed so that's all clipped ready to go into the sewing machine and just um, firstly I'll do a running stitch down the edge just to get it to go together and then I'll do zigzag stitch uh, which will reinforce the stitching and also seal the edges of the towel to stop it fraying further. I do have an overlocker and ordinarily I would use the overlocker to keep a nice neat finish but many of you don't have it so I thought I should really show you using it without the overlocker. Um, so that's that's what I've done and as you can see this is inside out but that's going to be the shape of the hood and this is the edge that will be attached to the bottom half of the towel the actual bath towel um, so I'm going to sew this edging and then show you what we'll do 
after that. Okay, so I've sewn the edge together of the hood, nice and neat. And if I turn it the right side out, we'll see. There's our little hood, ready to go to the towel. So now for attaching the hood to the towel, um, you need to make sure that you're correct, you're putting it to the right side. Um, now, I've made this towel for my granddaughter, Lacey, and I've actually stitched her name on the bottom of the back of the towel in the Minions alphabet. So this is going to be the right side of the towel, so I'll turn it over to the wrong side. And I need to find the middle, so if I put the wrong sides together to find the middle of the towel, and then I get a pin, and I just put the pin in to the top of the corner, which it doesn't want to do, um, just to mark where the middle of that towel is. And then I've got the middle of the towel here, of the hood, sorry, which I then need to attach. with the pin so I've caught that and then I'll clip along the edge I love to use um, these clover clips they're absolutely brilliant um, especially when you've got things that you don't want to pierce such as uh, if you're working with leather um, you still have to be careful they can actually they've got slight teeth they can still cause a bit of a mark um, so sometimes I might put, place a piece of a thin cardboard or, or some felt to stop it from leaving a mark um, but they're absolutely ideal to use I, I swear by them they're, they're quite expensive to buy but quite a worthwhile outlay I bought a box of 50 and they just last and last I've not had one break on me in two years of having them um, so I do highly recommend them um, so there we have the hood ready to be sewn um, and I'll make sure that I'm using yellow thread for this side, blue thread for that side. What I do is I start sewing from the centre out and then I go back to the centre and sew to the other end because if I start at one end and carry on, it could be that sometimes the fabric will stretch slightly or move and the centre of the hood could end up further along one way than the other. So by starting sewing in the middle and going each way, that's actually stops that problem. The hood will stay dead centre. Um, so I shall be back with that shortly and you shall see the finished product. So there you have it, one finished towel, all sewn and stitched together already uh, to give to my granddaughter, who's two. Uh, at the weekend. I will just show you, if I can zoom out, um, how to fold these towels as well for presentation because um, they do look nice when they're presented. Oh, I'm knocking the camera. If you take the towel up a third of the way and then go up to the top and then go from one end and roll the towel into the centre nice and tightly into the center and then go back the other way and roll in from that edge. Um, you can, I've got lots of little threads on here which I will have to tidy up. You can um, use a bow for the middle, which I, I will do to stitch it together. Uh, it's not to stitch it, sorry, to hold it together so it looks nice, but you can stand them up And then you just put the hood in a certain way. It's a bit, bit fiddly. <laughs> um, and that's it. And there you have French Frills One-Eyed Monster Hooded Towel. Um, otherwise known as the Minions. Um, but yes, so I'm very happy with that. Um, I love French Frill designs. They always stitch out beautifully. They have very good, great, good designs and they have plenty. 
Um, so I hope you enjoy making some hooded towels. And thank you for watching.